Hey everyone, welcome back. My name is Anna, aka Brooke Willow, and today we're gonna talk about all of the projects that I am currently working on. you all are having a great start to your week. I am very excited to be filming my first studio chat of 2024. I'm trying to go away from using the term knitting podcast because for my channel specifically, I do a lot more than just knitting. If you're new here, I obviously do knitting, but sewing, weaving, spinning, um, and some other little crafts will pop in and out. So here on out, at least for now, I'm feeling pretty good about studio chat. And this particular studio chat is very heavy on the knitting and we'll just jump right into that. I have quite a bit of knitting to show today and the reason for that being is that I ended up having last week off of work because I got an emergency appendectomy last weekend aka I got my appendix removed and I have had the whole week off of work to recover and thankfully I did not lose my knitting mojo. It really kept me going all week long and I've casted on some new projects this week, working on some other projects that I've been previously knitting and I'm really excited to show you it all. So let's start out with the two finished objects that I have to share today. This first finished object I briefly touched on in my last video, which was everything I knit in 2023, but I didn't go into too much detail about it, so I did want to give it its time to shine on the channel, and that is the S'mora Beret by Gudrun Johnston from the Shetland Trader. It's a beautiful stranded color work beret. I was really in the mood for A, a beret, B, stranded color work, and C, the color pink. And I was able to achieve that in this whole beret. I absolutely love it, and I'm really happy with how the color work turned out on it. I was really trying to focus on creating good contrast between the colors. I didn't want any low contrast. I really wanted to, the pattern to stand out because it's just gorgeous. And I love the way that it fits. When I first was knitting it, I was a little worried because in the photos in the book, it looks really tiny on both of the models' heads. And I didn't want mine to be that tiny, but I just cast it on anyways. And it ended up being a perfect size for a beret. I didn't do anything special in terms of blocking it. I've actually just heard that people use like a dinner plate when they block their berets, which I think is a really good idea. Um, but I just laid it flat and it seemed to block out just fine. I used the recommended yarn, which was Jameson of Shetland Spindrift. And it was my first time working with this particular yarn and it is a type of yarn that I really wanted to knit for a very long time. I feel like it's one of those classic bucket list yarns that everyone should just try at least once. And yeah, my local yarn shop actually sells it so I was very fortunate I got to go see all the colors in person and take my time putting them all together and I'm really happy with the result. I haven't been able to wear this much because again, I so far in 2024, I've had to stay home quite a bit, but now that I'm feeling better, I'm excited to give back out in the world and I'm definitely going to be wearing this beret. My next finished object is one that I knit for Mitch. I 
had knit him two sweaters a few years ago, pretty much back to back. And then a few years went by, I hadn't knit him anything in a while, and I decided, yeah, I was in the mood for it. And he had been wanting a nice cardigan style sweater, so I showed him a few options that I could make him, and he landed on the Tamarack Classic by Jared Flood of Brooklyn Tweed. And this is it right here. I am very happy with how this one turned out. There was a couple different options that you could choose from in terms of making this. One being the cowl style neckline, or you can do just like a plain rib neckline. I opted for the cowl style because I just thought it made the cardigan a lot more special. And then you had the option of putting the front pockets on or not, which I thought was also a really nice addition just to add a little detail to the front. They're not like super functional, but I think they look nice. Yeah, the yarn that I used was Wool of the Andes Bulky from Knit Picks. It's a yarn that I have wanted to use for quite a while. This pattern called for a bulky weight and I'm assuming they probably recommended the Brooklyn Tweed yarn that they sell. Um, but I, I just wanted to try a different type of yarn out. and. Yeah, I think it was pretty nice. I think I, for the whole sweater, I knit him a size small and I believe it called for 11 skeins and it ended up being like $60 because I think the yarn was on sale as well. I also was left with three skeins of it after, so I don't know if I did my math wrong or what happened there, but thankfully it wasn't super expensive yarn, and I'm sure I could use this in the future for a project. I also used some of this in my house pillow, if you remember that, around the edge. So yeah, it's already had multiple uses. The color is Brass Heather, and it is kind of inspired off of the classic Carhartt style. That's the color that Mitch wanted, and I think this was a really good uh, color for that. I ended up getting some buttons from Etsy. I can't rem remember the name of the shop, but I got these vintage leather buttons on here, which was actually a suggestion from you viewers, so thank you for that. I think it fits this cardigan just perfect for it. When I was knitting this up, at first it was knitting up super long and skinny and I was so worried that the sizing of it was just gonna be wrong. Thankfully with blocking I was able to stretch it wide which ultimately made it shrink up and it created the perfect fit. I think it fits Mitch so great and I am very pleased with how it turned out. One tip I have if anyone plans to make this and you are swatching for it, I would recommend using one of the pockets as a swatch. They're kind of the perfect size for a swatch, especially when you're swatching for a sweater. You kind of want to swatch beyond the four inches because oftentimes that can kind of lie to you. I've been trying to make a good habit of making much larger swatches to really get a better idea of how it's going to grow with blocking and whatnot. But yeah, if you make it, use one of the pockets to swatch and it saves you time. It's one less pocket that you have to knit up later. Uh, this did knit up really quick, being that it was a bulky weight yarn, which selfishly I was kind of happy about because, I don't know, there's something about making something for somebody else I kind of wanted to go by faster, <laughs> I think, so then I could move on to my own things, I know. But I'm never really making more than one sweater at a time, so I'm just happy that this zoomed on by because now I cast on myself a sweater which I'll show you in a little bit. And then one little modification I may go back and make, and this is upon 
Mitch's request. Apparently he has a hard time finding the buttonholes on here. <laughs> And he was hoping that maybe I could stitch in a reinforcing, like with embroidery thread or something, around the buttonhole in like a bright reddish orange. And I said I would possibly do that. And it would kind of add a cool detail to it, I think. But yeah, so that's one thing I may go back and kind of adjust after the fact. I have four brand new whips to show all of you, none of which I've shown on my channel or on Instagram before, and this first one I am so excited about for a couple different reasons. Back in September, I believe, uh, Blue Sky Fiber put out a call for people to apply to become a Blue Sky maker for the 2024 year. So I decided to apply because why not? And I got accepted. So I'm officially a Blue Sky maker for 2024. And basically what that means is they are providing yarn support for two different projects that I'll be working on throughout this year. And in return, I'll be posting photos and giving my uh, thoughts on the yarn and allowing them to repost the photos on their accounts as well. So very excited and uh the first project that i am working on for them is using their baby alpaca sport weight base which is this right here and i am making the scout shawl which is something that has been on my list to make for i want to say at least a year now and i'm so excited with the color palette that I chose and the yarn that I'm working on. So I'm just gonna go ahead and show you it. Here is how far I am with it. It's kind of curling in on the edges currently because it is stockinette, um, but hopefully you get a good idea. So first, let me just talk about the yarn. Like I said, it is the Baby Alpaca and I am in love with the way that this yarn feels. It feels like cashmere. And I can say that for sure because I'm working on another project that has a cashmere blend in it and they feel exactly the same. I am using five different colors for this particular project. And the ones that I'm using are this green, which is emerald, this natural white color, and I have cornflower. And I put the tags for these other two. I think this one's oatmeal, possibly. And then this brown color as well. I'll list all of the yarn in the description below so you can check it out too if you are interested. It's been knitting up great. I really like using especially soft yarn that is gonna be around my neck and used as outerwear. Um, yeah, I'm having so much fun with it. The pattern has also been a ton of fun to work on. I've just been in a really big stranded color work mood, especially after making that beret. I didn't want the fun to end. So this has been an awesome project, especially because there's so many different patterns throughout the whole shawl to work on. So I never get bored with whatever I'm working on because by the time I'm kind of like getting over one of the patterns, I move on to a new one. This pattern is by Florence Sperling Studio. It is a one size shawl and again using stranded color work. One thing that doesn't really bother me that may bother a lot of other people is the fact that you have to purl color work as well since it is a stockinette flat piece so you're knitting on one side purling on the other side and I actually have not really been having an issue with purling color work or just purling in general. I'm really trying to change my mindset that purling isn't bad and it really isn't that bad. And I've sat and thought about it. Like, why do we all think purling is so horrible? <laughs> yes, it's not as fast or as comfortable on the hands, but it really isn't that bad. And I also kind of love the way the floats look on the back. 
I know a lot of people like showing off floats and one particular cool thing about this project is that I could still see some of the floats as I'm wearing it. Um, it won't just always be hidden inside of the garment. I just, I think they look cool. Of course I'm going to wear it right side out all the time, but if you happen to see the back side of it, I just, yeah, I think it looks really cool. I'm having a lot of fun with this. I am prioritizing this project first because I have like somewhat of a deadline to have it finished. I told them I would finish it by the end of January. I'm starting to feel maybe like a tiny bit behind. So I am just going to focus on this for the rest of the week and see how far I get. But I do have quite a few other projects to show you that I'm excited about as well. My next whip is a sweater that I am knitting for myself. I realized that I don't think I've ever made myself just a plain sweater that didn't have cabling or lace or color work of any kind. And I thought it was time to just make myself a staple sweater. So I decided to make the Versal Pullover by Albina McLaughlin. And this is how far I am on it so far. I have been in a really big mood to knit like a grassy green sweater, something that I'll be really excited to wear towards the end of winter and beginning of spring when I'm really craving spring weather, but I know it's still gonna be really cold and gray out. So I knew by the time I finished this sweater, I'll be very happy to wear it. I mean, I'd be happy to wear it now too. I absolutely love this color. The reason I chose this pattern is for a couple of different reasons. First of all, I have never knit a pattern by Albina McLaughlin, but I have been eyeing out her patterns for quite some time now. She seems like a really cool person and yeah, I just wanted to try knitting her patterns. And I also like the versatility that she provides in this pattern. First of all, when you purchase it, you get a women's version and then a whole separate document for a men's version so you can mix and match the fit of the sweater. And then she also gives different directions on how to do different necklines, whether it be crew neck, uh, mock neck, or this turtleneck option as well, which I know is like pretty easy to figure it out on your own, but it's still nice that she provides those extra directions. And I think this will be a sweater that I will definitely come back to again again, um, especially if I want a plain sweater that's just like a crew neck option or Maybe I want to make a men's version for Mitch again, who knows, but I just liked the idea of being able to use this pattern quite a lot. This is a top-down pattern, another reason why I was really excited to knit it. It uses a saddle shoulder technique, which I think looks super nice, as well as a very healthy amount of short row shaping in the back as well. So I know that this is gonna fit super nice. I was in between sizes for this. I was in between a four and a five, but my gauge ended up being a little bit smaller than the sample. So I decided to size up to the five. Another thing that's really cool about this particular pattern is she also gives you directions on how to knit half sizes. So if you're in between two sizes, um, she tells you what to do. And I would have done that, but since my gauge was smaller than her gauge, I just went up to the larger size anyways. So this is how far I am. It is knitting up really quick. I haven't actually worked on this a ton and I'm already this far. The yarn that I'm using is, I decided to go with Jameson's again because I loved knitting that beret so much. I figured why not just knit with a different base that they offer. And this is the Shetland Heather Erin knitting. So it's 100% pure Shetland wool and yeah. Here it is, 
Is it gonna tell me the color? Yes, the color is Pippin. And this is exactly the color that I was envisioning in my mind, just this beautiful grassy green, but there's also a lot of dimension within the yarn as well. There's little bits of oranges and blue to create just a nice heathered look. So yeah, very happy and Maybe I'll have it finished by the next time we sit down and have another studio chat. One thing that I started doing with this sweater that I can't believe I have not done this before, but since the balls are just 50 grams, it means I'm switching out yarn a lot and I didn't want to have any tails to really weave in. So I finally started spit splicing, except I'm not using spit, I'm just using water with it to make it very seamless. And I don't know why it's taking me this long to do it because I absolutely love doing this technique. For So for those who don't know what spit splice is, is some people use spit or just a little bit of water in your hand and you take the two ends, let me see if I can, I don't know. You would take two ends and kind of wrap them around on themselves like that. I can't tell if you can see. And you can fray a little bit of it too. And then you rub it in your palm really fast and hard to create a lot of friction. And you're essentially felting the two yarns together to make it one seamless yarn. So yeah, again, love that. I'm going to continue to use it for all of my future projects. One thing to note though is it doesn't work on non-superwash yarn and it probably does not work on any plant fiber yarn too, only on animal fiber that is non-superwash. Did I say it doesn't work on non-superwash? It doesn't work on superwash yarn. One little thing though I have been a little annoyed with this yarn is, there's a lot of tied ends within the balls of yarn. I think I've gone through three balls of yarn and every single one of them has had tied ends to it. And I know like when I come to them in the future, I'm going to just untie it and split, spit splice those so they're pretty seamless. But I don't know why I didn't start out doing it that. And one of the ties ended up being in the worst possible spot, which is up on the neckline, right in the front too. So I'm just gonna have to do a really good job of weaving that in. My next two whips that I'll show you are actually some scrappy projects that I'm working on. And the first one is the Harlow hat here by Andrea Mowry. This is using leftover yarn that I spun myself and I made the Everyday Cowl by Andrea Mowry. I for sure thought I would have enough to make a hat as well, but turns out I don't have enough yarn, but I'll talk about that in a little bit. This is a brioche knit hat and you can use either one color or you can use two colors as well. I opted for the two colors it kind of looks like I'm just using one color and that's just because the two different skeins, one of the plies was using the same color changing yarn and then the second ply, one was like a white and one was like a yellow color. Here's where I'm at so far. I'm almost done with it. I'm actually about to start the decreasing at the top and honestly I could probably finish that today if I put my mind to it. In the pattern she only shows you I believe how to knit it without a brim so I'm just knitting it extra long to create the brim. Basically you just knit in brioche until like an inch and a half before you want the top to be done. So here's where I'm at so far. I did run out of one of the skeins. So then I started doing both colors in the second skein. And then I realized I'm going to run out <laughs> of the second skein. So I started switching the kind of background color of the brioche to be just this creamy undyed white yarn that matched the ply 
white yarn that was in the hand spun. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> and I don't think it looks too obvious or too bad. I'm excited to have like a, just a scrappy little hat that will also match the cowl that I made using this same yarn. I have made this pattern once before last year for Christmas for my niece. So this is the first time I'm making an adult version. She has two different adult sizes available. There's like adult small and adult large. I'm knitting the adult small and it is coming out to be pretty big. It's not too big for my head, but I must be just using thicker yarn that was recommended. I didn't gauge swatch or anything because I kind of think that's pointless for a hat. I still think it'll fit pretty nice on my head. It'll just be kind of a bulky, chunky knit hat. And I do really like wearing those. My next whip is one that was very much a spontaneous cast on. I was actually working on some spinning and I was thinking a lot about just what maybe I want to knit in the future. And especially since I have my short hair now, I kind of wanted to knit a headband versus just a hat because sometimes with hats in this hair I feel like it just looks like I almost have no hair so I thought if I knit a headband it'll kind of show people like yeah I do still have hair and I wanted one that uh, would have color work on it especially because with color work it makes the fabric twice as thick so it'll be extra warm going around my ears and I knew I wanted it to kind of be in like a sky blue family of color. So I decided to jump into my scrappy stash and I have so much of this cashmere left over from when I made the June top last year. This is the Cashmere Merino Bloom by Pearl Soho in the colorway Hydrangea. And I knew this would be just enough to knit something with and definitely the base color that I wanted to use. And then I wanted to incorporate kind of a natural white. But then as I was going through it all, I found that I have a little bit of this yarn left over as well. I made some mittens out of this. It's just a two-ply farm yarn that I got at a knitting festival last year. And I really liked the way these three colors went together. So I went searching around on Ravelry and I was looking for like a two color work headband and I wanted it to have like flowers or leaves or any kind of plant material. That's just what I was envisioning. So I landed on the, okay, I'm gonna butcher this cause I think it's French, a L'Ombre de Olivier by Ocean LM. And this is a free pattern, which is an added bonus. And it's got this really beautiful leafy pattern all throughout it. I will just show you how far I am on mine. So this is where I am at. Again, I decided to use the Cashmere Merino Bloom as the background color. I just love this periwinkle look. It kind of reminds me of a winter sky. And then for the leaves, I decided to do the white. I know there's, I don't think there's really white leaves, at least in my <laughs> environment here. And then I really liked the way that I added that third two-ply color yarn as like the stem of the whole thing. It just adds a little something extra to this. And I think it'll look really nice with my hair color as well. So yeah, I'm really excited to have this done, but I'm having a lot of fun knitting it as well. It's a very intense chart because there are no pattern repeats or anything, so you kind of have to stare at it the whole time. It's kind of a blend between intarsia and stranded color work, um, but yeah, I think it's really pretty. For this particular project, especially since the chart is so long. I have been utilizing a stitch counter or a row counter, I should say, to help myself keep track because I just don't 
think that I don't want to spend like five minutes every time I pick up the project trying to figure out where I left off. So that's been very helpful for me when knitting this. Not a ton else to say about this, just that I love the colors and the pattern so far. I was able to get a little bit of spinning done this week with the time off that I have, especially because it was like low impact movements. Um, so it was really nice to kind of switch up a little bit of knitting. I'm knitting a sweaters quantity to make the Traveler Pullover by Andrea Mowry. And this is the fiber that I chose for it. I think I've shown it off before. It's by Emily C. Gillies and it's her hand dyed Norwegian luster wool. I just think the colors are so gorgeous. Especially because these are like fall colors. I think by the time I am done spinning a sweater's quantity of this and ready to knit it, it'll be like coming up on fall time next year. So I'll be really excited to knit with this. So I've been able to finish one skein so far. I decided for this yarn, I wanted it to be a three ply because I... I know that'll get the weight of yarn that I need for the project. And I wanted to mix it up. I was just doing like barber pulling for all of the yarn pretty much that I've been spinning up. But for this particular one, I wanted to try doing a little bit more of a gradient through the colorway, but I didn't want it to be too much of a gradient. So I decided to do two singles of color going the same direction and one single going the opposite. And this is what it turned out to be. I think I'm actually gonna open this up too so you can kind of get a better idea. I haven't washed this yarn yet, um, so it does still need to be washed and thwacked and all of that, but this kind of will get you hopefully a better idea of how it turned out and I'm very happy with how it turned out I know that the having that extra colorway going the opposite direction just kind of softens up what ultimately the stripiness of it will be so yeah I love this I have Quite a few more skeins to go with it. Um, I was trying to look to see if I had it near me, but yeah, I'm gonna need, I think, like six or seven skeins of this. So this is definitely gonna be a long-term project that I wanted to get started on now, but I'm sure I'll slip in other spinning projects on the way. But yeah, I just wanted to show off the first one that I have done here. And I recently decided to give my wheel a whole spa day. It was getting like pretty dusty and creaky and wobbly. So I ordered some maintenance supplies from the Woolery. I got some wood wax. So my wheel came unfinished and I wanted to just kind of protect the wood a little bit more. And so I decided to get like a wood wax that you just kind of rub into it and then like rub the excess oil off of it. And it gave it like a beautiful, richer wool color to it. And I feel like the wood is just like moisturized in the right way. Not like it's not wet or anything, but it feels like softer to touch. And I think the wheel's very happy for it. And I tightened up all of the screws. I got proper oil to oil the wheel with. And I got a new drive band for it too, cause it stretched out. But yeah, it was really nice just taking an hour to give some maintenance to my wheel. And it's so much more enjoyable now to spin on it. I don't have any finished sewing projects to show you quite yet, but I wanted to talk about some that I have planned for my immediate future, mostly because I want to hold myself accountable to actually finally start these projects. My mom 
actually gifted me a serger machine for my birthday slash Christmas this year. So thank you, mom. I'm so excited to use it. And I haven't set it up quite yet, but I am very eager to learn how to use it and finally have beautiful finished edges on the inside of my garments. I think that I am definitely at a point where I'm ready to just kind of take my sewing to the next level in terms of finishing it a little bit more professionally. And so that is a big motivator for me to work on these next couple projects, but also because I'm excited to wear them. So you may remember this fabric. It is fabric that I thrifted this summer. I got eight yards of it. I was able to make a really cute pair of pants with it. And I also want to make a dress out of it as well. So I thought I already have the pattern for it. I think I'm going to make a zero waste gather dress by Brigitte Helmerson. I made this dress a couple years ago for both myself and my one of my best friends and I made it in a linen which is very nice and especially good for summer, but I thought it would be nice to have a flannel version of it as well for winter time. I haven't really been wearing dresses at all this winter, and I think the reason for that is because I have sewn all of my dresses in linen. I feel like most of the clothes I've sewn in general have been in linen, and I kind of want to challenge myself to use different fabrics. I think it would be fun to use some knit fabrics and some more wool fabrics. This one is flannel. This is probably going to be my next project that I sew up and so I'm putting it out there on my channel which means I have to finally do it. The next project is using fabric that I never thought I would ever use. A lovely viewer reached out and asked me if I would be interested in taking some fabric off her hands. She was cleaning out, I think it was her mother's old fabric, and it was a lot of like winter fabrics that were from like the 80s and the 90s. And so I told her, yes, I'd be interested in seeing the fabric, and she sent photos of it and there's all of these beautiful wools and um, some other different types of fabrics mixed in there as well. So she sent them over to me and now I have a ton of awesome fabric. Thank you so much. I'm very excited to use all of this. There are a lot of fall colors so I think I'm going to save a lot of it for kind of when I'm in the mood to sew up some fall garments next year. But there's this one particular fabric that I think I'm going to make a, my one of my next garments out of, and that is this cheetah print ultra suede fabric. Again, this is something that I never would have really picked out for myself, but I think, you know, since it kind of fell in my lap, I just got super inspired by it. And I know like cheetah is a fabric that kind of comes and goes in trends and it's kind of making a comeback again right now. And it's one of those patterns that will just always come back like time after time again. And so I especially really liked this version of it because it's pretty neutral. It's not like super in your face, I think because it's using lighter colors and the print is a lot smaller too. It's not like big bold splotches and that's one thing I really liked about it. There's quite a bit of yardage of this as well. I would guess there was probably like three yards of this fabric and I want to make a long A-line skirt out of this. I think it'd be really cute and especially to wear it with some like heeled boots or something with it. I don't know, I just got really inspired to make that. And I landed on a pattern that I'm going to use. I haven't purchased the pattern quite yet. But there is this pattern company that's new to me called Folkwear, and they have a bunch of patterns that are inspired by kind of like folkwear from all around the world. And they have one called the Walking Skirt, I think. Let me find the exact name. 
yeah, it's 209 walking skirt. And this kind of is the exact shape and almost the length. I might shorten it just like a hair on this one. And I really liked the waistline on it as well. So this is the pattern that I plan to use to make with this fabric. So I'm very excited for it. So like I said, I had the emergency surgery last week. Um, it was kind of a whirlwind. It started Friday early morning. I was having like severe stomach pains and it kind of put me out. Like I was asleep the entire day on Friday. No motivation to knit, which is a really like big indicator for me that something's not right. And then the next day, Saturday, still the pains did not go away and they all were kind of in my lower right abdomen. So Mitch is like, let's just go to urgent care. And I'm like, yeah, you're right. We'll rule it out. I was there for three and a half hours. They were running all of these tests and they finally figured out that I had appendicitis and they sent me straight to the hospital from urgent care. Thankfully, the hospital is right here in the town that I live in, and it was just like less than a mile from urgent care. And an hour after that, I was in surgery and came out of surgery. And an hour after that, I was like sent home, <laughs> which just felt like the biggest whirlwind. It was just crazy. Um, I am very thankful for modern medicine and that I am privileged and have access to it and the great doctors and nurses and family and friends that took care of me this whole week. Recovery has been very good. Um, today as I film, it's Sunday. I'm on no pain medication, no Tylenol or anything. So I'm really happy with how quickly I was able to kind of bounce back from it. But I did get a little stir crazy this week and my routines got all messed up. My house is kind of a mess. Um, so I'm excited to go back to work tomorrow actually and kind of try to get back into normal life again. But a couple of things that I have been watching throughout this week that I will recommend is one show, it's a PBS show. I was watching it on the PBS app, but I think it's also available on Amazon Prime, a couple episodes. It's called Art in the 21st Century, or also known as Art 21, and it showcases different artists around the world, and the way they film it is really great, and these artists, of course, are just super inspirational. They were really inspiring to me. And as I was watching these episodes, I was kind of thinking outside of the box with my own crafting on different ways that I can bring my own personal artistic side into it. I know that what I'm doing here is very craft heavy, but I want to bring like an element of art into it, if that makes sense. And so very inspiring show to watch that I really recommend if you are looking for something just easy to kind of watch while you knit. And another show that I just started last night and already watched six episodes of it is Beef. I know it just won a bunch of awards and it's very like White Lotus-esque. So if you really liked watching White Lotus, I really recommend this. I haven't finished it yet, but I probably will tonight. It's just so good. And then in terms of books, I have been listening to a book called The Day the World Stops Shopping. And who is that by? It's by J.B. McKinnon. And it basically is this person who interviews these people who work for these huge corporations and they do a bunch of research themselves and whatnot. And they basically theorize what would happen if everybody stopped shopping um, for like non-essential goods. And it's also kind of comparing US culture to different cultures in the world who don't have so much access to everything they need or want instantly as we do and just kind of how much happier of a life they are living than a lot of us here in the US. And it's been a really good. I don't normally 
go towards nonfiction books, but for my goal this year for Q1 of the year, I'm trying to not buy anything but essentials. I overspent a lot last year towards the holiday season and it, to a point where it just kind of made me sick and I'm like, you know what, I'm not buying anything, I'm just buying groceries and gas. And so this has been a very motivational book to continue and it's kind of helped me rethink my purchasing and just wastefulness in a way. I'm not the most wasteful person, but I, you know, we all can improve on it, I think. And yeah, it's just kind of changed my mindset quite a bit on it for the better, I think. And I don't know, it's been really good. I haven't finished the book yet. I'm about halfway through. I would recommend that one to you too if you're considering maybe spending less and need a little bit of motivation for it. Other than that, I've just been, you know, crafting away, mostly knitting, and I'm excited to get back to work and just kind of have a normal life again. <laughs> but yeah, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. It's always fun to catch up with you all. I love having conversations in the comments with you. So if you have any questions or anything, you know, always reach out down below. And if you like what you see here, please give it a thumbs up. That really helps my channel out a lot. And if you're new here, welcome please consider subscribing and sticking around and you won't miss out on any future content. But I hope you have a good rest of your week and we'll chat next time. Bye.